It would come as no shock to anybody who watches this channel that I'm a fan of renewable energy. I do think climate change is real, though I may not be as doom and gloom as some other people. I see fossil fuels as sort of a necessary evil to get us to where we are right now, but it is time to transition to some more sustainable energy sources. You know what I'm also a fan of? Facts. So I can sit here and pump my fist and talk about how renewables are better than coal in every possible way, but that wouldn't be the facts. And that wouldn't make me any better than the Koch brothers. So I set out to make a video that looked at renewable energy sources as objectively as I possibly could to try to find some real solutions toward a cleaner future. I wanted to explore the pros and cons and get real about what works and what doesn't. And all those details added up. The shiz got long. So that one video has now turned into a three-part video series exploring seven different renewable energy sources, starting with today's video on hydroelectric and geothermal. All right, so sustainable energy, renewable energy, what exactly are we talking about here? For the purposes of this series, I am defining renewable energy as A, something that never runs out, and B, doesn't need to be extracted. For example, a lot of people put nuclear in the clean energy category because it doesn't release any pollutants and it doesn't have any carbon emissions or anything like that, but you still have to dig all that uranium out of the ground and then put the nuclear waste back in the ground, carefully. So I'm not gonna address that in this video, although there are some persuasive arguments about nuclear that I might need to address in a future video. Also, just a little caveat, because I can see the comments coming already. I'm not gonna count materials that need to be extracted to build the infrastructure and the equipment needed to harness the energy. I'm just talking about the fuel source itself. And that leaves us with the following energy sources. Solar, wind, geothermal, wave energy, tidal energy, hydroelectric, and biomass. I'm gonna break down the pros and cons of each one of these energy sources. So if you're into renewable energy, Hope you got your party panties on, but first, a little cold water. The global yearly consumption of electricity in 2016 was 21,191 terawatt hours. And that keeps getting bigger. And last year, the total amount of energy produced by renewable sources? 5,000. We've got a ways to go. So our energy sources can be divided into two camps, intermittent, and base load energy. The base load is the minimum amount of electricity needed to keep a community's lights on. Base load energy sources need to be stable and flexible, something that's always generating energy but can be increased if there's some kind of spike in the grid. And that's why coal is so popular. You can burn as much of it as you want and if you need to increase it, just shovel some more coal into the plant. Coal is kind of like nature's battery. It stores sunlight captured by photosynthetic organisms millions of years ago, and when those organisms died, they collect together and with time and pressure and heat, get transformed into coal. And then we can release that energy by burning it. So for a renewable energy resource to be a base load power resource, it has to either be something that's always generating electricity, or you have to be able to store that energy in some kind of storage mechanism so that it can release it during intermittent periods where it's not producing energy. But the two most stable renewable base power load sources are Hydroelectric and geothermal. Hydroelectric is the use of moving water to turn turbines that generate electricity, usually through the building of dams or pump stations on rivers. And hydropower is kind of the king of renewable energy, making up 70% of renewable energy around the world. And for good reason. It's kind of the perfect energy source. It's stable but flexible. If you need to add more electricity to the grid, just increase the amount of water that goes through the turbines. They're cheap to run and maintain once they're built, and they're 95% effective at turning energy into electricity, as opposed to coal at 33% and solar at 15. And of course, they create no pollutants, they use no fuel, and the water never stops flowing. The Three Gorges Dam in China is actually the largest energy producing plant of any kind in the world. It actually creates 100 terawatt hours of energy a year all by itself. So yeah, hydro is kind of perfect. The problem is it's location specific. If you don't live near a large river, you're not gonna be able to use it. Luckily, most cities are built near rivers, but not all rivers are big enough to be able to justify the upfront cost to build something like that. Which is also a problem because while they produce cheap, almost free energy for decades and even centuries to come, Dams are huge engineering projects that cost a lot of money up front. By the way, the whole expensive up front and then free for decades thing is a common theme amongst renewable energy. They also create reservoirs and lakes that flood a lot of land, and those landowners don't always want their land to be underwater. So every hydro plant is just a bird's nest of legal and engineering challenges to overcome, but even still, the number of hydro plants in the world is supposed to double by the year 2050. So the next base load power is geothermal energy. Geothermal uses heat from natural geologic hotspots to turn 
and turbines that generate electricity. Iceland and the Philippines are major leaders in geothermal energy, which can be used to power giant plants that power entire cities, or you can just pump it directly into people's homes. It's a consistent flow of energy that never runs out, but the efficiency isn't great. It only runs at about 12% efficiency, which really just means that it takes a long time for the initial investment to be paid off because once it's turned on, it's just free energy. And some newer power plants have gotten up to around 20% efficiency. But even in Iceland, which is covered in hot spots and has a very progressive attitude toward renewable energy, only 30% of their electricity is provided by geothermal. So it's really not likely to become a major source of energy worldwide. And as if that wasn't enough of a bummer, it also turns out that geothermal energy can produce greenhouse gases. Geologic hotspots can turn up all kinds of stuff from inside the earth, like sulfur dioxide and silicon emissions. And it also produces heavy metals like mercury, arsenic, and boron. These can get in the reservoirs and eventually the water supply. Oh, and by the way, one of the methods they use to open up these geothermal vents is hydraulic fracking. Yeah that hydraulic fracking. Yeah, let's drill down and inject really high pressurized water and chemicals right over a volcano. What could go wrong? Earthquakes. That's what could go wrong. Just like fracking for natural gas has started causing earthquakes in Oklahoma. Earthquakes in Oklahoma. A geothermal well that was drilled in Switzerland set off an earthquake that measured 3.4 on the Richter scale. Geothermal. Why do you hurt me so? I used to think geothermal was really cool used to. So am I wrong about this? Do you have any experience with geothermal or working in the hydro industry? Are my numbers just garbage? Let me know in the comments. The next video in this series will focus on biomass power and using the motion of the ocean to create energy. Thanks so much for watching. If this is your first time here, please check out some of my other videos. And if you like those, maybe subscribe because I just keep doing these. Special thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon for supporting this channel and helping making these videos possible. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to the people who joined this week. That's Ken Goldstraw, Shahaf, Carlos Dangerous, and Daniel Zwietny. Uh, thanks you guys for joining. If you would like to join the party and get uh, perks like my secret vlog that nobody else gets to see amongst other goodies, you can join us all at patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Also, this video is sponsored by cankerboy.com. If you get mouth ulcers, you don't have to be in pain. This is a daily supplement that helps prevent these things from forming. If you'd like to try it, there's a two month risk-free trial. Just go to cankerboy.com, give it a try. Thanks again for watching. Like and share if you liked it. Now you guys go out there and have an eye-opening week and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.